All right, so episode five, Photo Redux. Now this episode, going back to 2009, March. And actually, this is one of my favorite photos in terms of when I think back on the experience uh, of the photo, of getting the photo and why I was there and who I was with, this photo has that nostalgia. So I took this photo in, I think it was Government Center, uh, which is a tea stop or a subway stop in Boston, Massachusetts. And it was during the time I was attending my very first Photoshop World. So Photoshop World is an uh, annual, I think it's actually, it used to be twice a year, I think now it's once a year, but uh, back in the day, they would go uh, to Boston at the Heinz Convention Center. Uh, you know, that was Kelby Media. I think it was Kelby, it was before Kelby won, but it was with Scott Kelby and it was the first photo expo I'd ever been to. And so one of the things that we typically did, I don't know if we still do it now, but back then photo walks were huge where you would get together with a group of people, mostly people you just met or people that you spoke with online. Blogs were huge back then. Social media wasn't nearly what it is today. Um, and you'd get together and you just walk around the city. So for this photo, we were going from one place to another in Boston. I remember it was freezing. That is one thing I remember. It was frigid. March uh, in New England is very cold. So the reason why I like this photo is uh, it's a, I tone mapped it, and when I look at it, just like kind of the other photos in this series so far that involved HDR, it's a bit much. It's more than a bit much. And I get that. That's okay. Because back then, what I would do a lot of is add a ton of clarity, a ton of sharpening. I wanted the surfaces to like where you can feel it. If you put your finger on your screen, I wanted you to be able to feel the texture. And you know, nuance was not something that was in my vernacular back then. So, you know, this is what it is. Now, the reason why I particularly like this shot is uh, it was taken at a perspective, at an angle that I really like. It was using a very wide angle lens and kind of shooting upward of this parked green line T train. Uh, and these are the subway cars that run throughout Boston. And when I look at it, it reminds me of kind of the face of a, of a Cylon. Some believe that there may yet be brothers of man. An old Cylon droid for some reason. And if you look at the photo, uh, I think you'll agree, HDR tone mapping is appropriate for this. We're still, HDR is still one of those things that has a, a place because there's a lot of dark parts and a lot of light parts. Again, we're gonna go over that in a minute in front of the computer, but I just kind of wanted to give you an intro here. Um, one of the important things when I look at some photos, some of my favorite photos, it's not just the, the kind of visual qualities of the photo, it's the nostalgia behind it. The thing, the kind of those memories, maybe the smell or the people you're with or just something about that experience of actually taking the photo. Not necessarily the photo itself, but just what it was like. And I remember that was, I was very fond of that evening. I had a really great time with some cool people and just one of those cool things. And like I said, uh, that experience plus this is actually one of my favorite photos. I really enjoy it. So let's jump in front of the computer. We'll use Adobe Lightroom and maybe some Photoshop and uh, bring it to a 2017 kind of visual preference. All right, let's check it out. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. These are the five brackets. We'll take a look at them in a second. And then this is the photo that I edited. We'll take a look at that. And just kind of like I mentioned a minute ago, for me, the big thing is uh, back then, I was very much into very contrasty, high detail stylization for anything that I tone mapped. It just can, that was my the aesthetic that appealed to me. And if you go back to my older photos uh, and look at them, you'll see uh, what I mean. First, you can go back to some of the older photo redux uh, episodes, but also if you just go way back into the blog, there's no shortage of those kinds of photos. So uh, it's not something that I dislike. <laughs> I just look at it now and uh, not my cup of tea today. But, and so as far as the brackets go, uh, this, so this, these were taken with the Canon 5D Mark II and the EF 16 to 35 millimeter F2.8 L Mark II. And it's a great lens. And as far as the brackets go, uh, I bracketed in camera. This is 0.8 seconds, 3.2 seconds, 1.6 seconds, six seconds, and then 13 seconds. Now, let's look at these for a second here. One of the things that I didn't realize back then was uh, moving elements as much. Like I didn't care about ghosting. So you see over here, 
Let's look right there. There's a person over here. There are people back there. Never even noticed them. Next exposure, gone, gone. And he keeps stair stepping through. And there's now he came back and he's moving around and he's there over there. So in each of these photos, that's what causes ghosting in an HDR, period, end of story. If you have some elements in one frame and it's gone or it moved in a different frame, the tone mapping algorithm is going to try to resolve that somehow. And with we talked about this in the previous episode of Photo Redux, de-ghosting has come a long way. So let's take a look at the photo itself. <laughs> Yikes, that's a crime scene right there. So. It's just, uh, it's an abomination. Uh, and, oh my God. It's so bad. I, I really, I, I look at it and, I, and I, I have to laugh because otherwise I would cry. And let's see why. So you've got crazy halo right over there. I don't know what's going on. Look at that detail though. I mean, that's what I was talking about where I want you to be able to like feel that texture uh, on your screen when you, when you kind of rub your finger on it. Uh, overall, there's there's the ghosting I was talking about. You see there's some ghosting right there. You can kind of see the ghosting back there. These are things I never really considered. I over sharpened this image to hell. It's just, it's really bad. And that's why this series exists because now I can go back and kind of make, make up for some of the wrongs that I did. I guess if you want to call it wrongs. But so the first thing we're going to do is tone map. So in Lightroom, I'm gonna select the five brackets here. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna to go to photo merge and then select HDR. And by default, I have my de-ghost set to none and I don't select the auto align or auto settings check marks. I like to do everything myself. You can see this dude's over here and you can kind of see those ghosts from the original photo that I showed you. So what I'm gonna do is click on low and you can see it did a good job of kind of sourcing. If I check the show de-ghost overlay, I'll just toggle it a few times so you can see it got this guy right here and it got the people back there, which are the two places in the photo where there was movement in between bracketed frames. So nice job there, Lightroom. Uh, I'm happy with this and I'm gonna click merge to start finishing up the tone map. And that leaves us with this HDR photo. It's right here and it's in the file, HDR-2. This is the, the kind of original photo. So let's open this photo up and go to the develop module. Now, here's the thing about HDR. Why do we do it? Why do we tone map? Again, it's not necessarily, or I don't want to use it as a stylization technique. Every photo, pretty much every photo that uh, is in this series that had HDR applied to it, was I was using tone mapping as a stylization technique. And I have since kind of grown, where to me, it's a utility. HDR is there to help wrangle in tone. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at this photo. This is a great example of a scene that has a ton of dynamic range from the brightest to the darkest elements. So from the brightest, you've got these lights, bare lights, they're right up here and you see how they're totally blown out. And then you also have the super dark shadows down here under the train car. So that is the tonal range of the photo and it's represented by histogram. So the histogram is something you should always pay attention to from left to right, the histogram plots out the tonality where on the left, you've got your blacks and your shadows mid-tones, highlights, and then white point. And the first thing that I like to do is kind of correct the tone. Now, if you remember just a second ago, I didn't select the auto tone checkbox when we did the tone mapping. And that's because I like to do it manually. So let's do that. In the uh, histogram, you can see that the uh, warning for highlight clipping is showing. So you can see on that left there, the lights are being blown out. So this is what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna open up the overall exposure of the photo which is further blowing out the highlights. It's also blowing out the sign right up here. Now, what I'm gonna do is bring back the highlights. I'm gonna recover the highlights, and this is how I do it. I'm gonna press and hold the Option key while dragging on the highlight slider. If you hold the Option key or the Alt key for Windows people while dragging on highlights or shadows or black and white points on those sliders, you're gonna see something cool. So check this out. Pressing and holding on the Option key, and when I click on that highlight slider, you see a view where it's showing me exactly where highlights are being clipped. And so if I go to the left, I'm gonna drag this until I barely see any of that. And so look at that. I mean, now we see the details. I can even bring this furthermore. So watch, if I uh, undo this, one, two, look at that. I mean, just look at how much, look in the light, 
one, two. And then look at the sign up here. One, two. I mean, that's the magic of HDR. That's where tone mapping shines. That's when you should be using it. So when I look at my histogram, I can see now it is plotted out really nicely. I have tonality throughout the whole photo. Next, what I'm gonna do is press R because I don't want this guy in here. I'm just gonna crop in until he's gone because he just really doesn't serve any purpose in this composition. I'm okay with this people back there. That's really not a big deal to me. Uh, and then now we're gonna start actually stylizing. So let's add a little bit of contrast here, a little bit of clarity. You can see it brings out some of that nice detail. The other thing that I want to do now that I'm thinking about it is bring out some of the shadows on this right side of the photo. So I'm going to go to my graduated filter. We'll select shadows here. And I already have it out like this. And then I'm just going to drag out kind of like that. And you see how it really brings out those shadow details? That's what I was looking for. So watch if I undo it and then redo it. It just brings out some of that nice detail. I'm also going to take an adjustment brush with that same shadow strength. And let's just really quickly open up those shadows down here. Moving on, let's go here, do one of my favorite things and work with the tone curve. Add a little S curve here, open up the highlights, add some shadow detail, and then open up the shadows by adding a little bit of gray and that gives it uh that vintagey look that i am so fond of i don't know i love it i i absolutely love this look so that's good there except it's really warm and it's actually a bit too contrasty so i'm going to drag down that contrast slider just a bit all right now i'm going to change the channel for the tone curve to blue i want to add a little bit of blue in the shadows here and warm up the highlights kind of like a little bit of a split tone. Now we'll go to HSL. I'm going to take the saturation target adjustment tool. This target adjustment tool basically is whatever you put the, that little tool over, whatever color it hovers over, that's the corresponding color that will be affected. So watch if I put it over here, it's going to affect the aquas. And if I click and drag up, it increases the saturation down decreases. And so I'm going to go and decrease it a little bit. I actually like the way it looks here. I'm going to go to the hue, do the same thing. And this is a great way to kind of experiment with changes to color, to hue, uh, and to luminance. Cool, that's good there. And now let's go to luminance. Let's open that up just a little bit. And so watch if we toggle that entire panel. Kind of see what it does. It's a cool little trick. It's something that I, I recommend you do. Uh, just kind of hover over and just drag up and down and see what it does. because that the target adjustment tool is a great discoverability tool. Uh, you don't necessarily know that aqua is the color you want. You just kind of hover over, click and drag up and down and you see what the effect is. Worst case, you just undo and you're back to normal. So, all right, we're good here. Uh, with the split toning, I'm gonna add a further, kind of a deep blue to the shadows only, somewhere like that. Then we'll go to sharpening. Let's put our little target on an area that should be sharp, like the handicap sign press and hold the option key while dragging on a mount. And I'm just looking at that little sign right there and stopping where it gets really nice and sharp. You don't want to over sharpen it. And then with masking, let's press and hold the option key while dragging, alt key on windows, by the way. And again, what I'm doing here is I'm looking for an outline in the mask because I don't want sharpening applied to kind of flat, smooth surfaces, which is exactly what we did in the original photo. I applied sharpening everywhere. The concept of masking out sharpening was foreign to me. Never really did anything there. Now, normally I would apply a vignette. Actually, let's apply lens correction. So this is correcting for the uh, 1635, really got rid of a lot of that barrel distortion and the vignetting. And speaking of which, that was what I was about to say. Normally I would apply a vignette using the post crop vignette panel. And I can show you what that kind of looks like. See kind of darkens. It's darkening up top and on the bottom here, but I really don't want that. What I want is to preserve the front of this, uh, the train. So let's go to the radial filter. Let's just draw a nice big circle right there. Then we'll go to exposure. And let's dark, you see, now we're getting that. That's the kind of vignette I want, something like that. Let's drop the highlights a little bit more. 
And let's go ahead here. Let's right click on that and we'll go to duplicate. And this time we're gonna select invert because now I wanna brighten that inside. So let's go to exposure. We'll open that up a bit. Now I really only want that to apply to the front of the car. So I'm gonna combine this with a color range mask. So what I'm gonna do with that is basically, this is a new tool with Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. It allows me to select a color or a group of colors to apply the mask to. It's not just going to the shape of that radio filter. So I'm gonna select this dropper here and I'm gonna drag right here on this and press shift while dragging over here. And now the mask is really only applying to those areas, those colors. Now here's the cool thing, watch. Let's, this amount slider controls the sensitivity of that. So if I press and hold the option key while dragging, check this out. You see how it's getting even more sensitive? So if I bring it to the right, it's gonna allow every, this is basically that radial filter. But as I drag it to the left, it becomes more sensitive. So it's not allowing that effect to apply to the side over here. It's only applying to the front, which is awesome. And let me go ahead here. I'll shift click on the headlights so we get that in there as well. And as far as stylization goes, this is good. Watch, let me close the radial filter here. Let's do a before and after toggle really quickly. So that's our original. See, it's pretty cool. Nice little change. Last thing I'm gonna do is I wanna apply a bit of a tilt shift blur. I wanna blur all of this in the back there. I don't think it really does anything. I wanna draw the attention here. So to do that, I'm gonna go to photo, edit in, and then select Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. And then we'll go to filter, blur gallery, and we'll select tilt shift for the blur type. Now, typically with tilt shift blurs, you're going on a horizontal plane, but in this case, I want it to be vertical. So I'm gonna put my cursor right over here until it turns into a little curved double arrow. And we're going to make that more of a vertical mask. We'll bring it here. And then I'm going to take the two hard edges and I'm going to place them kind of on, frame them just outside of the main face. And I'll take the dotted edges, the distance between the solid lined edge and the dotted edge, that's the feather, that's the transition from in focus to out of focus. Same thing on this side here. I'll bring this out a little bit further. And then as far as the amount goes of blur, I'm gonna bring that to about 12. It's a bit more of a realistic blur. Let's bring that feather out even more to make that drop off a little bit more realistic. Then I'm gonna select high quality. And actually now that I'm looking at it, let me bring this in a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. That's looking good. And then we can click okay to return back to Lightroom. All right, so that ha now you can see here is that bit of a tilt shift blur, adds a really nice fall off. Uh, and you have the your eye right here, which is where it's sharpest and brightest. And the last thing to do is Let's take another graduated filter. Let's take the exposure and drop it just a tiny bit. Drop the shadows, drop the highlights, and then let's kind of drag from there. And let's move that kind of right there because it was a bit too bright on the left side of the frame. So now we're looking really good. And yeah, I'm really happy with this. This is, this is a lot cooler, I think. And so let's go ahead and go to the grid view here. We'll compare the two photos and yeah, I mean, just kind of look at the difference. I think it's just a lot more tasteful. Uh, the presentation is, is nicer in my opinion. This is, I mean, it looks like a horror show uh, and it might've had a time and place, but to me, this again represents my visual aesthetic, what I find more pleasing. So with that, again, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photo Redux, please hit that thumbs up. Let me know that you like this video. Leave any comments down below and be sure to subscribe for more videos that will be coming out every week. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot.